Hi and welcome to this series where I'll, I'll be going through the ITIL 4 practices individually and I'll give you the headline points you need to be aware of in order to help you support your base knowledge around ITIL 4. I'll also be discussing some of my real world application of this practice in organisations. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the bell for the updates. Okay, so let's get to it. Today I'm going to be covering off monitoring and event management from the service management practice. There's 17 of those. I've done previ previous videos on um, the other practices, but today I'm going to be talking about the monitoring and event management practice. Quick reminder, what's a practice? It's a set of organisational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective. According to the foundation, ITIL 4 Foundation, the purpose of monitoring an event practice is to systematically observe the services and observe the service components and then record and report selected changes of state. I always like to emphasize the word changes of state. For me, that's how I always associate monitoring and event management. It's the change of state. It was something, it's now something different. So um, report on the selected changes of state identified as events. This practice identifies and prioritizes things like infrastructure, services, business process, infosec events, really important. And it establishes the appropriate response to those events. Now notice I said appropriate there. We'll talk about that more in, in a second. But um, it's about responding to those conditions that could lead to a potential fault or an incident. The definition of an event is a change of state. What's that phrase again? Change of state that has significance for the management of a service or the CI, the, the configuration item. Events typically recognized through notifications created by an IT service, a CI or a monitoring tool. Monitoring and event management is about managing events through the life cycle. Um, ideally preventing, or if they do happen, minimize them. Best case scenario, eliminate them and eliminate any negative impact that it might have on a business. I always quite like to think about self-healing technology. So uh, as a good example there, maybe there's dynamic storage increase or capacity. So if something's happened, then what? What, what can be done to, to minimise or eliminate any negative impact to, to your business. The monitoring part of the practice focuses on the systematic observation of services and the CIs um, that, that are associated there that, that underpin the, um, the conditions of potential significance. Automation is the key here. It's really important to look at this practice from, uh, uh, you know, through the lens of automation. Think through those principles right, right at the beginning. What are the guiding principles? One of them was look for um, uh, automation and optimization opportunities. This is a really good practice where, where you need to be giving double focus around automation. What, what can be done actively, what can be done proactively, what, what can be done to, to try and um, reduce the, uh, um, uh, the damage, if you like. Quite often as well, just, just thinking this through, and, and I will talk about it as, as we go, go through, the, the monitoring and event management practice links in to all the other practices, or, you know, the, there's, there's kind of, there's a real emphasis there of, if something happens, then what? And, and that then what can be one of those practices. So it could be a general management practice, a service management practice, a technical management practice. But it's, it's certainly one of these areas that not only automation is something you really need to be thinking about, there's a strong connection into other practices, which is the, it's almost the if then type statement. 
Okay, so the other the other point really, I guess, to kind of stress is that not all the the alerts or the events or the activities are equal. So some are more important, some are more equal than than others, if you like. Um, so um, something that is an informational alert or a notification perhaps a batch file has completed successfully that's great that's good that doesn't have the same weight necessarily as 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 a red alert if you like that then says the system's down it's not working the connection's gone i've run out of disk space the you know whatever whatever's happened that they're not not all alerts and not all events are equal some have different significance than than others and that's where where you get to your classification element uh, as part of this practice what what is what what's informational what's good to know a batch file has has run successfully great fantastic don't need to worry about that we can focus on the next thing a warning might be some kind of activity that says okay i'm okay but maybe i've met my threshold maybe you set something that said as soon as i reach um, I don't know, compute capacity of 75% or storage capacity of 75%, send a warning, do, you know, do some kind of um, action or, or activity. That clearly has a different set of requirements than something that is informational. And then exception reporting, perhaps there is a hard down, something has completely failed, clearly different set of significance there as, as um, over a, an informational warning. So just be aware of that. Think through what are you going to be um, monitoring and to what level. And I will come on to, to a really important point about that in, the, in that the tendency is to try and monitor absolutely everything. And if you're not careful, you will go around in circles and you just won't have time to do anything because you'll have so many alerts and events pinging off left, right and centre. So the activities, that leads quite nicely in, into the activities Point. and the monitoring and event management practice has a number of activities that you would be well advised to make sure that if you're wanting this to be successful you need to think about this as, a, as an activity so I'll, I'll go through those first port of call is about what are we actually going to monitor what are we actually going to say okay when something happens when an event happens, how are we going to manage that? So think through your services, your systems, your CIs, the components that you that you wish to uh, to monitor, and that will be the basis of your strategy. Then the implementation and the maintaining of that monitoring, leveraging what you've got. So um, think through. Again, going back to one of the guiding principles, don't start, you know, don't try and um, start completely again. It may be you can leverage some existing te technology, some tooling, um, you know, start where you are to go back to a, to a guiding principle. What tools are available? What have you got? Perhaps the system itself that uh, you're looking to be monitored or the service itself has some inherent monitoring or alerting activities or or um, hooks in it that, that you can use. So native features or, or, of the system. Or you may say, no, we want a full blown all singing or dancing uh, tool that uh, that plugs into to the entire um, ecosystem. And then think through your thresholds. So I, I mentioned a few moments ago about perhaps a disk storage or a compute environment or, or you know, maybe it's a networking environment where you may want to say, what are the thresholds? It could be um, informational alerts from anywhere between 0 and 50% for the sake of argument, and that, that's all green. And then the next level might be, okay, well, anything over the wrong side of 50% we want to know about, but clearly we may say, let's say 50 to 75% is, is an amber, kind of alert that it's not a showstopper but we need to be aware of it we need to be thinking through hang on this is reach capacity is that a period of peak activity for example in the business or has this been growing steadily and now it's yes it's the wrong side of 50 percent and it's growing on a on a curve upwards 
at x degrees, fine, you can be proactive there. You can maybe think about budgets as well for um, for securing new, new equipment maybe. Um, and then think through the criteria as well. What's informational, what's warning, what's what's red, what's, what's the exception? And then make sure you've got policies and, and uh, processes in place around once something has happened, then what? What do you want it to do? What do you want your team to do? Do you need to go out to an external team, an internal team, or have you got some kind of automate, automated batch file that will go off and run something and do something, or, or it'll kick off another um, uh, practice or, or a routine of some kind in order to, to handle that, that particular situation. And then automation, I mentioned that earlier, it's really, really important. You need to look to, to try and automate um, activities here and it could be as simple as when if you're monitoring something and a um, an alert of some kind is generated you may say okay well anything that is uh, not informational you want it to create a ticket or a log or some kind of activity within your service management tool and then it goes off and it's assigned to a particular subject matter um, group an assignment group of some kind for just an example I've worked in a lot of enterprise organisations and this whole area can very easily get wildly out of control. Monitoring and event management, it's going to be creating millions, tens of millions of, of events over your ecosystem. So you really need to think about how do we categorise this in terms of alerts, what's informational, what's critical, no, we need, absolutely need to do something about this. The, the mistake I've seen in so many organisations is so much data, so much information is generated, it becomes unmanageable. So you really do need to think about the automation piece and you need to think about what are we actually monitoring, what's important, what are the activities that, that we really do need to be on and, and make sure. Slight aside, a lot of my background is regulatory environments from a financial service um, sector and quite often it's a requirement to store some of these alerts as well and hang on to them for a period of time and certainly in an, an from an international perspective um, the, the the sheer volume of data and, and information that's generated in in these areas is is vast so um, there are regulatory requirements that you may well need to hang on to some of these logs or, or tickets or um, or events, think that through. I mentioned about the event cycle and and the you know the the actions that you need need to think through. And certainly you've got your detect and your identify and, and logging. The categorization piece we've mentioned a few times, and then prioritizing those those activities as to what 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 need needs to be done, and then um, making sure that that's been delegated to. To, to the right, um, whether that's individuals or subject matter expert groups or vendors or perhaps automated corrective action. If we, if we just take a step backwards from monitoring and event management and sort of just, just look at it as what does good look like in the realms of monitoring things and dealing with, with event management in, in the widest sense, you, you, you would look at it and you would say, well, okay, first off, we need to have some kind of agreed approach or some model that um, uh, we, we've got in place that describes types of events and what, what our capabilities are around this and, and what do we need in order to, to detect when things go wrong. Or... Actually, to be fair, um, you know, not all events and not all alerts are bad news. It, you know, there could be good news that that batch file has run successfully, that transfer has completed. Um, uh, but yeah, you know, you need, need to really think about the, the capabilities there and the approach and, and the model. And then clearly availability of timely uh, and um, relevant and accurate and, and uh, I, I suppose confidential and and the integrity of of the data is provided to all of the people that need to see that data 
So there's no point in sending it out to absolutely everybody. Who are the people that, that are concerned with this and, and need, need to be aware of it? And then if you were to take a helicopter view in terms of what, what does success look like, what, what's good um, from a, a monitoring and event management perspective, you, you would say, well, clearly we want to make sure the right events are detected in the right time. But not only that, when they do happen, we've got the right people or the right practices or the right processes or whatever it may be, that corrective action, that control, they're interpreting them correctly and then doing something about it. And, and I think that's where, from experience, it can become unmanageable if you're not doing this correctly because the sheer volume of information that comes in I've certainly seen teams just completely get swamped in terms of acting. You, you know, you've got to do something about it. And and um, unless they're, they're being prioritised and, and they're being interpreted um, and, and people are actually doing something about it, it starts to become a bit of a nonsense. So it's really important that not only are the events detected, then diagnosed or, or translated or interpreted, if you like, is then act on them in the right order by priority. So if we now very quickly go through the service value chain, my way of remembering the service value chain is the um, acronym PIDOD, which is plan, improve, engage, design and transition, obtain and build, deliver and support. All of that is at the center of the service value system, which is right at the core. So monitoring and event management, it's involved in all of the activities, but there's a special nod, if you like, there's, there's greater emphasis in the delivery and support element. So think when something happens, dot, 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 then what? So are you going to be, um, uh, you know, does the practice then need to engage with internal support, external support, third parties? Is there some corrective action? Is there some automated corrective action, for example, or is manual intervention needed? Maybe it needs to um, kick into another practice, perhaps a general management practice or a service management practice or a technical management practice. Parting thoughts around uh, monitoring and event management. I've said it many times by now, it's automation. You must try and look at the automation piece here. It's a guiding principle within ITIL 4. Look for automation, look for optimization. So when a, uh, a, a an alert of some kind is, is raised, then what? Do you want it to create a ticket? Do you want it to, to have some corrective action linking to another practice, for example? Don't forget security events. Really important to make sure that security is, is taken care of in, in this practice and, and making sure if there is a security event, it needs to get to the right people. There needs to be, needs to be in the, in the uh, queue of the right people at the right time and the right priority. Don't forget to report and measure. Uh, key trending information is really good. I can certainly think of a real world example of where I've looked through alerting data for a 12 month period and noticed there's a particular CI that at year end, it generates huge amounts of alerts and lots of events and lots of activities coming out of that piece of equipment. When, when I then looked at it further over a, a couple of years, it, you could see there was a quite clear trend that not only was it generating more and more alerts and particularly at year end, it was it was growing significantly. There was a capacity issue there. So I was able to be proactive there and, and put some kind of forecast to say, it's not a problem at the moment, but in two years time, approximately, um, this is going to run out of disk space or, you know, the, there's some kind of activity we need, we need to just think about in terms of securing budget. Okay, that's it. I'll um, finish now. I'll sign off. It was just a very quick overview around monitoring and event management and the, the ITIL4 practice. Please do subscribe and I'll continue to post videos.